They tell me there was a football game last Ooh, night. Wait. And I'll be honest, for the first five minutes, I thought there was. Hey, yeah. Because the Browns go right down the field, bang, touchdown. I'm like, oh, no, here we go. And then the Jets come down, go right down yeah. the field and get a Brees Hall yeah. touchdown. And I'm like, Look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I, I play football, too. And then, of course, the rest of the, yeah. <laughs> of the game happened. And congratulations to the Cleveland Browns and the amazing city of Cleveland. You are now officially in the postseason. And how about this? How about this? How about it. this? <laughs> because they won yesterday and get to 11-5, and five, mm. they now get to sit back and watch that Baltimore-Miami mm. game. And if Miami beats Baltimore, the Browns would be alive in Week 18 to win the division. What? Talk about it, Biggs. Yeah, you know what kills me? I remember being on this show and talking about how great Joe Flacco is, and people <laughs> scoffed at me. Laugh, <laughs> Willie, what are you talking about? He's in mobile. He can't throw the ball. He's 38 years old. He's been on the couch. He knows nothing about football. This man has done everything you said he can't do and more. He has put the city on his back, on which his is back. great because it's Friday. We have great genius here, yeah. right? <laughs> so overall, for all you naysayers and haters, eat it. <laughs> eat it, eat it, eat it. Because yes. Joe Flacco has delivered time after time. He is the reason the Cleveland Browns are stable and ready for the playoffs. You know, go, Joe, go. We did it, Joe. I love it when the blind squirrels have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Craig. Look, it was, it's what a good team should do to a yeah, bad team. Yeah. Especially a team that's going to the playoffs who hadn't yet you know, locked up that playoff spot. And let's not get it twisted. The Jets are a bad football team right now, and the Cleveland Browns are not. Yeah, man, they came out firing on all cylinders. I thought they did a great job of understanding what was at stake. Like, yeah. we're going to clinch our playoff berth tonight. They got it done. Uh, kudos to Joe Flacco. You've been yeah, saying Yeah, man. It. Uh, he still was trying to give him like, yeah. three more <laughs> <four, laughs> <four, laughs> He wanted to yeah. give it to him. I will say this. Congratulations <laughs> to the city of Cleveland. Great that you're able to clinch in your own yeah. building because yes. that building has seen a lot of bad football. So the fact that you got to celebrate it, and it was kind of like a New Year's Eve party uh, last night in Cleveland. Congratulations. The Cleveland Browns are going to the playoffs. Yes, and think about this. You know, the Cleveland Brown fan came into this year with a lot of hope and expectation that Deshaun Watson was going to be healthy and right and back to form you know, four years ago uh, with the Houston Texans. And based on that, they legitimately thought, you know, we're a playoff team. Mm -hmm. We might even be a Super Bowl team with Deshaun Watson. It took a 38-year-old, now journeyman quarterback, Joe Flacco, to bring that belief back, and it's back. And I was wondering, and maybe I missed it late. If I did, I take full ownership of that. I didn't see Deshaun Watson. Did you guys? Yeah. 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 He was, he was on the sideline. Yeah. Side That's, line. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. They, he was yeah. chest bumping. Yeah. He's cheering Joe on. Yeah. yeah. Craig, just to add to your point, is don't forget, they all stay, they're like, we're going to be great. We're going to make a playoff run if you're a Browns fan because we got Deshaun Watson healthy. We got Nick Chubb. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And like, those are the two stars. Nick like Nick yeah. Chubb was, I'd say, top three running back in the league. Yeah, they lose him week one, yeah. and you're thinking this season is over. And now here they are, 11 and five. They're still in for the division on the back of Joe Flacco and a defense which is at least top three. Yeah. Yeah. Funny how a month ago I said it was interesting that Deshaun Watson was in a luxury suite, not on the sideline cheering the guys on, and now he's on the sideline cheering the guys on, as you guys said. But, but uh, and I appreciate you guys watching. I went to bed. It's, I'm not going to lie to you. I went to bed at halftime. It was a wrap. That game was over. There's no way the Jets were coming back, you know, down more than a point. So I wasn't concerned about the second half of that game. But I will tell you this. I've been saying for a month now that the Flacco-Najoku combination is the best quarterback to tight end combination in the league, and that includes Mahomes and Mahato. All right? That's just the reality. They're not at this level right now in the moment. So I wanted you guys to see – what Flacco's emergence as the starting quarterback has meant to Njoku, okay? Ooh, yeah. what's up? You did some prep today. What's up? What's up? So every once in a while, when I tell you something, maybe you ought to listen to it. Okay. Because ever since Flacco became the starter, there is no better combination in the league than Flacco and Njoku. And first quarter yesterday, it was like historical yes. what he did. 118 yards. Was that a three 13, or an eight? I heard you say it. 113 yards in the first quarter alone for Njoku to set the tone. It's like the Jets decided, oh, he's your best player. We're not going to guard him. Right. That's right. exactly what happened. It made no sense to me nuts. at all. But we always talk about come January, if you have a competent quarterback, if you can run the ball, and you have a good defense, you can win a lot of games. 
I add the tight end to that mix because he's a security blanket, and that dude's as good as anybody right now in the NFL. It's good to have a competent quarterback, but there's another thing to have a mobile quarterback. Let's go to graphics right now. Yep. You got to give credit. Bill Callahan, one of the most, one of the best offensive lines of coaches uh, in all of football. For a long time. Right. He was with the Jets. Now he's with the Browns. Did a great job of saying, hey, he's 38 years old. I got the guys up front that can keep him upright and keep him do, doing and a good job. And think about this. Joe Flacco was the first quarterback to throw for 300 yards against the Jets defense since Tom Brady did it week in seven, 2021 yeah. on Week 17. Wow, yeah, yep. That's how special Joe Flacco is. He's an American hero, folks. And, uh, so <laughs> I think we got to get the wheel back out here. Yeah, Greg, <laughs> put, put the wheel back out here. Put Brady on the wheel. Greg spoke earlier about in the first half Joe, Joe Flacco's energy and his celebrations, and he was so pumped, he was yeah. screaming and high five, and then, but then. I started to get sleepy in the second half, right? <laughs> and I'm watching the game, and I was so like, wait Joe. a second, Joe Flacco's 38 years old. That, that, that was his second half. That was his second half. He's old. He's old. By the way, I did the same thing. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. I, no, did the yeah, same yeah. Exact I see it as a great average uh, marketing play. Like, give Joe a cup of Joe. It happens. <laughs> like, if I'm Cleveland, it's a the man just put himself in the door. He's so you know comfortable I mean? that he's asleep. Yeah. 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 Like, it, oh, by the way, goodness. if that doesn't get people fired in New York, then nothing will. <laughs> <laughs> like old man Flacco, who was a disaster oh for the New York Jets, falling asleep you gotta go at the game. Joe, you got to yeah, go in the game. Joe, you got to go back in the game. You're just yeah. going to turn over. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a rough look. Like, I, I got to send that. Get, make sure you email me that. <laughs> you got to I, I got to bring that to my end of year luncheon with Robert Sala and oh, Joe Douglas. Sleepy Joe. And by the way, I want to be clear. <laughs> yeah. No, Someone no, had to say it. Fire. Right. <laughs> Someone had to say it. Exactly. Guess there's two of them then. You're right. Someone had to say it. That's right. Aye, aye, aye. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.